Hello, this is a re-recording of um, something I should have already shot, but I didn't click the record button. So, here we are. Um, what you see is not just a very colorful circle, but a very simple Schlieren imaging setup. Um, I'm holding a lighter in my hands, that's what this shadow is here. And you can see if I click down on the gas release, you can see a little trail of... Um, I don't know, propane or butane or something leaving the lighter, you can see it arc over because it's slightly heavier than air. And if I light the lighter, you can see not only the flame, but also a large plume of um, hot gas just rising up around it. So this is something I learned how to do off of YouTube, and I just wanted to make a video on it because it's very, very easy to do and pretty cool, actually. Um, all it is is a magnifying glass, that's what this large colorful circle is, and a point light source pretty far away from the camera. I'm sitting at my desk right now, and this is what the setup actually looks like. It is just a magnifying glass. I have a headlamp over there on low power faced away from the light as far as I can get it. And then here is where I put my phone and I just clamp it to hold it up. And then here, of course, is the lighter. So, yeah, this is what I was doing that whole time as I was just pushing down the gas button. And you can't see anything coming out. But with this, you can actually see the invisible gas leaving the lighter. And I don't know if you noticed, but as it left, it even, like, trailed down. You can see it's denser than air. Uh, the way this works is the point light from the headlamp comes down here and goes through the magnifying glass. Most Schlieren imaging setups use a parabolic mirror because uh, it, it changes the uh, direction of all wavelengths of the light equally and there's no chromatic aberration because of that. This, you can see that... Um, you saw the video was like blue and red, so you don't get great colors and, you know, all that, but for what it is, it's very easy to do. And then you can just put whatever you want to look at in between the light and the magnifying glass, and any low or high density, or I should say any material with a different refractive index, instead of letting the light pass through the magnifying glass and then onto the camera lens, it deflects it slightly, which is enough to make it move ever so slightly off the sensor. When you set this up, you want to see uh, the light going through, and then on my hand here, let's see, you would want that right on your camera lens. Um, and then you'd be able to see anything over there, just like this. So, this is a pretty cool setup. This is like a $5 magnifying glass as opposed to, I don't know, maybe like a hundred plus dollar parabolic mirror that's aluminized. It's really nice just to see how cheap you can do real science. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I just took apart the uh, took apart the setup briefly, but I want to show you how to actually get it dialed in. So you put your phone about, you know, well it'll depend on the focal length, but you want your phone far away from the light source and you're going to put the magnifying glass in between it and the phone. And what you want is first find the light. There it is, that's the headlamp. And you're going to move your phone until, let's see, you're going to move your phone, see I'm getting closer and it's getting smaller. You want that light to take up the entirety, there we go. So once it's like this, that means, um, that means the light from the headlamp or whatever light source you're using is focused pretty much perfectly onto your phone lens. And you can see I'm just holding it with my hand and I've already moved it. Uh, it's pretty sensitive. Okay, there we go again. Yeah. So yeah, that's what you want. You want the light to take up the entirety of the area of the magnifying glass, and then you will put whatever you want to observe in between the magnifying glass and, um, 
your light source. Okay. I wanted to do a better explanation because I don't think I explained very well how this setup actually works. Um, so what's happening here is this little point here is our light source. In this case, it's just an uh, LED headlamp. And then here is our phone. And when we set up, um, when we have our setup in the way I described, where the entirety of the magnifying glass appears bright in the camera, this is what's happening. Light is coming through, hitting the magnifying glass, and then focusing directly back onto the camera sensor on all parts of the magnifying glass, which is why all parts of it look white or blue or bright, um, whatever colors it may be. Um, and when we have something in here that is a different refractive index than air, um, it changes how these lines of light behave. So for example, let's just say the entire atmosphere were replaced by some other just medium. What would happen is maybe the light would go something like this. It would bend more afterwards and then it wouldn't focus exactly on the camera lens or vice versa it would focus like behind it. But what happens when we only have a little bit of material disturbing light is this. Let's zoom in here and say that I have just some bubble of material that is either lower or higher. Actually, let's move it into, let's put it right here. What's gonna happen is light will come in and normally it would just do this. It would go through and it would hit the, um, it would just hit the sensor. But what happens here is it goes in and this cloud of material functions itself as a lens. Even if it's only a very slight difference in refractive index, it, let's say it just bends the light a tiny bit and as it comes out it'll hit a slightly different spot on the lens here and it'll go through and then it'll hit ever ever so slightly off of the sensor, either below, above, or to some side of it. And what that does is in the footage, it makes this spot on the magnifying glass, this area, appear darker. Um, and conversely, the opposite can happen. In some spaces where you, I guess there wouldn't be as much light, this uh, can direct light onto another part. So like you can see areas of the image that are darker and also lighter. Uh, and it's just the areas where it's getting darker, some of the light can end up going to areas where the image becomes brighter. Um, and I thought, you know, I'd just give that explanation because I don't think I explained it very well when I was demoing the machine.